Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of the camera slider project here at Architects 3 dp At the end of the last video we were preparing all the components to finish the assembly of the carry of the motorized camera slider and today we're going to start by assembling it. But before starting I want to thank you guys for your huge support. In the last video I talked to you guys about the hard work that this channel supposes and the lack of support that I was getting on Patreon. So well, in only one week we have passed from 16 to 19 Patreon supporters and I'm really happy and motivated for that. You guys are amazing. If you are new in the channel or you want to support Architects QDP on Patreon as well, remember that you can do it from only $1 per month navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3 dp You can also help us subscribing to Architects 3 dp on YouTube and sharing the videos you like, so more people will discover our cool projects. Alright, so finally, once we have all the components ready, I'm gonna start with assembly. First I'm gonna pick the camera mount and I'm gonna insert the biggest bolt in place, just like so. Next, we'll embed the M6 nut in here and in the camera mount. We'll put the locking washer and the M6 screw. Next, we'll assemble everything together and we'll tighten the screw all the way through. Well, maybe it's too tight, so I'm gonna release a bit of pressure and as you can see, now we can move it perfectly. Now we'll pick up the big bearing and we'll insert it in the embedded gap like so. And then we'll insert the assembly we just made on top of it. Next, for the bottom, we're gonna insert this piece that is going to transfer the movement right here, but before we're going to install the small bearing and bushing in place, as you can see here on screen. Notice that I have sanded the head of the screw using a drummer, so it's almost perfectly flat right now. That's why I will need to tighten it using a pair of pliers. Once properly assembled, we'll now insert it in place by rotating it as you can see, till we reach the bottom of the screw. Then we'll insert the M8NN nylock nut, and we'll tighten it in place like so. As you can see here, this is how it's gonna work. As the bushing moves from left to right, the camera mount will make the pan movement as you can see on top. Alright, so here we have our carry complete. By the way, I have to mention that this project has been possible in part thanks to Sakata 3D. They have provided a different set of materials that I'm gonna be using in some builds and you will also see in my coming post on Instagram. Sakata 3D is one of the few filament manufacturers that produce their complete line of materials in Europe, concretely here in Spain. So definitely one of the companies that you can always rely. For this project, I've used their PLA850 Quart, that is a very reliable filament for the big parts. And I've also used the Orange PTG for the parts that need to be more resistant, like knobs and camera mounts. I've been testing some of their materials, and I strongly recommend you to check them out through their website sakata3d.com, where you will find the shop and more information. What I'm gonna do now is to insert the carry on its rails making sure the wheels fit on the channels of the V-slot profiles. Here we have it! As you can see, it rolls very fluently. And here on the other extreme, here we have the two cables coming out. That will go inside the last component of the build, the electronics end. At this point, all we have to do is to insert the cables through the last component and install the subcomponents on it. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna try and insert the cables through the holes, but as you can see, I have assembled this slider before, and there is some tin still in the cables. This fact makes to introduce the cable through the narrow gaps almost impossible, so I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna remove all the tin and let the cables as thin as possible. And then I'm gonna take this heatshrink tubing and I'm gonna insert the two wires inside, so we have a unique cable that will be much easier to insert through the narrow hole. Alright, so with a little help of a pair of pliers, we have finally passed the two cables as you can see. The next we're going to do is to weld these connectors to the cables we just passed and protect them with heat shrink tubing, and then connect them to the set of electronics we already prepared. But before, I'm gonna put this away. 
and I'm gonna quickly show you the electronics we're gonna use. First, this is the typical stepper motor drivers, the A4988, that is I think the most used in low-medium range of 3D printers. As you can see, it's connected to a lot of stuff. In the top left corner, you can see the wiring diagram, so you can copy it in your build. Notice that instead of using a 9 volts battery, I'm gonna be using the 12 volts external power supply, slash battery, but the wiring is the same. I will let you down in the description the link to the post on Nova Spirit, where I took some of the information for the build. The next component is the NodeMCU ESP8266. It will create a Wi Fi network and access to the web page, and will also send the signals to the driver. This is the connector for the 12 volts power supply that is connected to the stepper motor driver. And the ESP8266 will be powered through this micro USB port by our external 5 volts battery, as you can see here. So next, as I said, we're gonna weld these connectors to the cables coming from the motor, and then plug them to the ones coming out of the stepper motor driver. In this corner you can see the time-lapse where I'm welding all the cables. You already know how to weld, so that's why I'm passing it very fast. By the way, don't mind the orientation of the cables, since you only have to follow the wiring diagram that i shown you before and you have right here. Alright, so once properly welded, I'm gonna connect them to the female plug I prepared before. And we're going to install all the electronics in place. By the way, you will find links down in the description, the complete bill of materials with the links to Amazon, where you can buy all the necessary components while supporting the channel. Ok, so once said, I'm gonna start installing the electronics. First of all, we'll connect the USB to micro USB cable to the power bank. Then you have to pass the micro USB through this hole. And then slide the battery in place. As you can see, it fits perfectly. Next, we'll place the Node EMCU with 4 small M3 by 10mm bolts. Actually, I'm gonna use only 3 because I broke one of the 3D printed mounts. So we'll put all the cables from the bottom of the node and we'll align the screws with the holes and tighten all of them. Next, we'll slide the power socket in place. It fits perfectly as well as you can see. Finally, we'll press the stepper motor driver in the gap we still have, so everything stays perfectly packed in place. Once we have it flat, we'll take this nice cover I printed in dual color and we'll slide it from the side, so everything stays nice and compact inside. But the electronics are not the only component we have to install in this end of the slider. We'll need to install, as we did in the other end, the two leg assemblies, with the feet and all the screws and nuts. For that, we'll need again the two legs, feet and knobs, two M5 by 40 mm hex bolts, four M5N hex nuts, and two M5 by 25 mm bolts. We'll assemble everything in place as we did before. And finally, we're going to install the tensioning mechanism, for which we are gonna need the structure, the moving part, the GT2 idler, an M3 by 20 mm screw, an M3W washer, and an M3NN nylock nut. We'll assemble first the moving part, as you can see on screen. And then we're gonna install the structure to the slider and block. But before we're going to assemble both parts together using a 40mm M3 screw and a lock nut that we'll embed in place. Once assembled, we'll attach the tensioner to the printed end. For that, we'll need a couple M3x40mm bolts and a couple M3 lock nuts and washers. Actually, we should have done this before installing the component. So for your build, remember to attach this part beforehand. I'm gonna have to remove the node to insert the bolts in place, but you will only need to follow the correct order. Once said, we'll insert the bolts from the interior and we'll slide the tensioner in place. Then we'll put the washers and lock nuts on the screw and we'll tighten everything together. At this point, we're gonna put the cover in place and we have this end of the slider complete. The next will be to install the linear guide for the panning system. For that, I've used a 12mm hollow steel bar that I've passed through the 3D printed bushing as you can see here. Then we'll install the ends, in which we'll have to insert a couple M5 hex nuts. For that, we'll push them on each of the ends of the rail, right here in this position. At this point, we're going to need two more 3D printed knobs, two 30mm M5 bolts, and two 525ZZ bearings. So we'll insert the knob and screw assembly through the end of the slider, put the bearing in it, and finally screw it into the 3D printed part. 
We'll then repeat this process on the other side. And as you can see, here we have it. Our build is almost complete. Look at this amazing result. Doesn't it look really cool? The last component we need to install is the GT2 belt that will transfer the movement from the motor to the carry through the idler. So to start with the installation, we're gonna flip the slider and we're gonna pick up the GT2 belt we were talking about and as you can see I have right here. First step will be to release all the tension on the tensioner mechanism as you can see here. Then we'll pass it through the gaps in the carry and we'll pass it around the pulley coming out of the stepper motor. It's then when we'll bring it back to the carry and we'll have to lock it to these two spots. For each of the points, we're gonna use an M3 by 20mm bolt together with two or three M3 washers and a lock nut. We'll have to make a sandwich in between the washers and the belt as you can see here. We'll repeat the process in the other side. Then we'll flip it one more time to check if the carry can move. And as you can see, it does perfectly. But the problem here is that the belt is not tensioned. So we'll flip it one more time and we're gonna use the tensioning mechanism I designed to put some tension on the belt. Look how the tensioner is moving back. Now the belt is perfectly installed. Last step here will be to flash the firmware that you have attached down in the description into the node MCU using the Arduino controller. And we'll be finally done for this build. You can follow the links to Nova Spirit's blog down in the description, where they explain how to flash the firmware into the board. Now I'm gonna let you with a couple cool shots of the slider working in different scenarios and the results we got out of it. I just wanted to ask you to subscribe to Architects3DP if you still haven't. Hit the like button, leave a comment and share this episode so more people will be able to enjoy with the new projects. And as always, a special shout out to my Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking here in the top right corner. Ok guys, so as always, see you in the next video.